What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Living in Flagstaff. And today we're going to be talking that we're going to be doing a, a, a brief overview of all the neighborhoods in Flagstaff. I'm going to get on my laptop. I'm going to do a screen share with you guys. We're going to go over, start on the east side and kind of go over all the areas of Flagstaff and talk about all the all the little um, pockets and different neighborhoods. And I'll highlight everything. So you're going to want to grab a pen and paper, grab some notes uh take a look here i'm walking to my office look at all these different neighborhoods that we got here so you can see there's quite a bit of uh little micro i call it micro markets within our market so lots of different neighborhoods lots to talk about uh, i'm going to cover as much as i can in this video uh so make sure you grab a pen and paper saddle up and get ready to take some notes What's up everybody, Jason here with the Schaefer Real Estate team. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on uh, all the content that we post. This is the channel if you want to learn everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, working right here in Flagstaff. This is the channel for you. We get folks reaching out to us on a daily basis who are looking to make the move here to Flagstaff, thinking about relocating. And we'd love to help them and we'd love to help you. We uh, we got your back when it comes to moving here. So make sure you shoot us a call, text, email, nights, weekends. We're available for you uh, and we absolutely love it. And we want you to know that we got your back. So in this video, like we talked about earlier, I'm going to kind of uh, I'm gonna go over the neighborhoods and, and uh, just kind of a bird's eye view of, of flight staff in the different areas. And I'm going to sweep it across. Uh, kind of like I do when buyers, when I, when I have people come to town and they, I just came and come to the, well, the little $2 neighborhood tour. Uh, I just start from the east side and work to the west side of Flagstaff. And I like to do that because on the west side is where there's a lot of new construction and we can spend some more time on the new builds. So we're going to start out here. As you can see, as I'm recording this, this is April. We just recently had a fire, uh, the tunnel fire that happened right here. It burned some, it burned uh, 25 structures out in this area. So we're going to jump right into it. This is no, located north, northeast. This area is kind of the Dony Park area uh, region uh, neighborhood. And this is 89, which actually runs you north to Page. And we got quite a few subdivisions out in, in this area. Um, so when you're looking in this area, right here is the San Francisco Peaks over here. You got a lot of homes that are built on here, actually on both sides. So if you're looking for lots that are uh, one to two acres, you need some space. Uh, you got animals, horses, um, goats. Uh, I've helped some clients. She got she's she's got twenty goats and needed a place, so she, we ended up helping her buy a place out here. Um, this would be this area to start looking. Uh, there's no HOA out here. A lot of people, they park their boats, trailers on the side of their house. Um, there's great views of the mountain right here because this is the San Francisco Peaks. So it's a really popular area. Now, there's a new pocket right here called Johnson Ranches, which is actually located right here. Uh, it's where there's actually going to be built. There's some new homes that are being built there currently. Uh, there's no other new, new home subdivisions being built in the area. Everything out there is going to be resale. Very few lots left to build on. There are a few, but most prices recently have gotten upwards two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a two acre lot. So it's really pushing prices. But this is the Dony Park area. It's super popular. Lots of space. Uh, two and a half acre parcels. There are a few other little subdivisions inside of Dony Park. Uh, I kind of zoom in, zoom in a little bit. It's an elementary school located right here in the heart of it. Uh, so a lot of this, if you're moving out here, you've got young kids, most likely they're going to end up at this Cromer Elementary School. There's a great uh, Peaks View County Park. We actually, uh, when I was coaching my two boys in football, we actually used to have practice out at that park. It's, they've got a nice 
uh, artificial grass field out there, uh, gazebos, playgrounds, stuff like that. Great, great little park right there. Uh, I'm going to scroll in over here, kind of show you guys that if you're looking for something that might be a little bit newer, this is areas called Slayton Ranch Estates right here. It does back forest service. It's kind of, uh, built in the, it's the edge of where, uh, the subdivision is in Doney Park, but it's kind of the last developable, buildable section that was put in. So if you're looking for newer builds, they're just finishing up construction out there, but you'll find a really a lot of nicer, newer homes kind of in this area. Now there is an HOA in, in this area. Um, it's about 150 a year and they just, they want to make sure that people aren't parking 20 cars out front, things like that. I mean, you can have boats, RVs, things like that on the side of your house, but what they don't want to do is have it looking like a junkyard. Uh, there'll be some different areas in the Doney Park area where um, you, you'll drive through there and <laughs> it does. It looks like it, 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 you can drive up, be right next to somebody who's got 20 park cars and it does look like a junkyard. Um, let's see right here. So another nice little subdivision inside of Doney Park is Pioneer Valley right here. Of course, it's not marked on the map, but that's another small, nice subdivision within there. It's got one acre parcel lots. And that does have a small HOA for the same reasons as I just described earlier. You'll see a few people that run their business out there as well. Um, but this area, there's not a lot of trees out there. I will say that it's wide open. One thing you want to realize when you're going out there in the wintertime or wintertime and the springtime more than anything, I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of get a view here, but You've got the San Francisco Peaks right here, and then you've got right here is the Schultz Pass, and then you've got Mount Eldon right here. So right where my cursor is is like a there's a pass between two mountains, and the wind will come howling through this area. Um, it's really known to be a very windy, very very windy part of town. Um, so people put up with it because uh, some of the views in this in the summer, in the fall make up for the wind. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous out there. Uh, half the year so something you want to consider when making the move out there is, is definitely the weather another thing is it's down a little bit lower on elevation and it's on the leeward side of the mountain so typically a little bit warmer a few degrees warmer and it does get less snow out there if, if you're gonna see what the, the snow out here if we got uh, six inches in town you might only get maybe three or four out here so it does get i'd say on average maybe 30 percent less precipitation in the area uh, during this, during the snow and the winter seasons, um, towns and Winona. So this is kind of where the tree line is, like right where I'm following my cursor here. If you follow that cursor, that's kind of where the ponderosa trees in, and it turns more into juniper country and wide open areas. Um, there's another main artery right here. This towns and Winona road. You got lots of little dirt roads and subdivisions off of this road. You can see all the gray areas are are develop subdivisions and areas where there's houses so you could take a tour out here and see some of these areas um there's a name of this particular this right here this is cosnino road this is a nice a nice equestrian neighborhood right here called cosnino there is a riding stable there um and it was developed and built in the 70s and 80s so there's some nice houses out there two and a half acre parcels they got a nice arena and stuff out there if you're into uh, horses and equine activities, uh, I actually used to live out in that area, had a couple of horses myself. So uh, it's a great place. And you get out here, you get out to all the way out to Winona. It's about uh, 10, 15 minutes from, from Flagstaff. There's all sorts of two and a half acre parcels out here. Um, different styles, anywhere homes range from manufactured homes that'll be down in the three to four hundred thousand dollar range all the way up to homes that are seven eight hundred thousand um so a lot just just a whole variety uh it's a lot of what i would call country living uh in flagstaff and in the area so if you're looking for that country style living the Doney park this east side area would be a great area to start let's kind of dive in and start zooming in now as we kind of sweep across the northeast side of town here I'll go in right here. This is Christmas Tree Estates. So you'll find a few townhomes. There's a lot of mobile homes in the area. Um, typically homes in there, you'll, these townhomes will go 
any they're starting the 350 range right now as I'm making this video in 2022 they've gone up considerably in price you'll find a lot of mobiles up in this area um, some of them are hard to finance just because of the how they're built and structured on the lot it's hard to get financing for some of them so you definitely want to keep that in mind this area right here is called smoke rise uh, subdivision that was built in the 70s and 80s uh, a lot of homes in there that range are usually a thousand to two thousand square feet on average. You're gonna find an average price point in there anywhere from four hundred to five hundred thousand. Um, and this is a new. There's a new little subdivision right here, a little development called Trails End that was just put in. Uh, a little smaller homes. Uh, they're smaller stacked homes with smaller lots, just because there's not much space left to develop. Um, those. Those sold out recently. Those are about in the four or five hundred thousand dollar range. So another little uh, new build area if you're looking in the Flagstaff area. Kind of keep scrolling down here. So as you're coming down off 89 Country Club, there's a big junction here, I-40. This is where we got our mall, and well, it's more right here. Sorry, the mall's right here, and you've got all the auto dealers, Best Buy, all the shops. Everything's kind of right here on the east side one thing i'll take i will make a note of uh when you're on the east side is there's not quite as many dining options restaurants things like that you're going to find that more on the west side of flagstaff uh, closer to campus and downtown so we kind of make it down uh, i'm gonna we're gonna just gonna scroll down route 66 here uh, this is mount eldon estates mount eldon villas so we've got some townhomes in here these homes were just built in the 2000s, 2010, so there's a lot of newer homes that were built in here. We don't see a whole lot of turnover in there yet. Uh, it was really nice because you've got a lot of trails right out here because Mount Eldon is right here. There's Fat Man's Loop. This is Mount Eldon right here. So you got a lot of trails right out your back door when, when you're in the subdivision. And I would say any, most anywhere you're at in Flagstaff, you're only five to ten minutes from trails. It's really hard to to say like which neighborhood's going to be the closest to trails they're all really really close i'll be doing some more videos to kind of sh to, to highlight some of that um let's scroll down here on route 66 and so we're kind of moving more into the center of town you've got a mix of different subdivisions here so um a, a popular subdivision is called green law so you've got upper and lower green law so lower green law would be this section kind of down in here there's a giant park called Bushmaster Park, which is located right here. It's a great park. It's been around for a long time. Really good area for, for kids, families. Those houses built 60s, 70s. You'll see a lot of converted garages that were built into bedrooms and living rooms in that area. So just be aware of that. Um, and then this is Upper Green Lawn. It's, it's very similar as far as the style of homes that you'll, you'll see in there. A lot of single level, single car garage. Decent sized lots, and there's there's no HOA in either upper or lower green law. Home prices, you're probably looking you're looking 450 up to 600 in that area. Uh, it's kind of a good first time home buyer neighborhood if you're looking in the Flagstaff area. Then we get up into here into Swiss Manor, which is this area right here. So you're gonna find uh, the homes were built. A lot of them were built in the 80s in this area. Sky View um all that you're gonna find they're bigger homes two stories not a lot of cookie cutter in there a lot of those homes were custom built uh, most everything in there is starting at uh 750 or under or over excuse me uh, and this really nice is this street right here these ones that are in the back you know they all backs forest service here and there's a pipeline trail which actually takes you all the way up here to our wonderful Buffalo Park, where it's just a beautiful park. A lot of people go there to recreate. You know, there's trails, frisbee golf. Um, it's it's just beautiful right there. So, kind of staying in the center of town, crawling, rolling down Route 66 here. This is a Sunnyside neighborhood. Um, I'll say Sunnyside probably. It's it's in the center of town. If you get more on the outskirts, there's some decent places, but you're going to find a lot of mobile homes, a lot of duplexes. I would say it's more of a, more of the hood side than the good side of town. Uh, a lot of crime in there, so you, you want to be careful of this area and be cautious, definitely. I know up in here, there's some nice areas. Uh, there's some really nice homes that back up this green belt that's right here. 
Um, also, we have our high school, Coconino High School. One of our two high schools is located right here. And this is Killip Elementary School. Let's see if I can log into it. There's, there we go. Killip High School, or elementary school here, they just rebuilt that school, which is great. Um, one thing I will note about this whole area right here, so we had some fires recently that were on Mount Eldon two years ago, and it caused a ton of flooding in this area. There's a there's a floodplain that runs through here, and the city of Flagstaff has, um, they have some drainage, and it, what happened was that all the debris from the rain and the monsoon after the fire caused a lot of the, the culverts to get clogged, which in turn caused a lot of flooding down the streets. So a lot of this area flooded last year when we had our, we had one of the record breaking monsoon years. So something to keep in mind, I, the city, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the board, the, it's, it's a citizens bond committee board. There's some bonds that are in place that are going to correct all, all of these drainage issues. Um, I will also note, I did <laughs> buy a house last summer and I was an escrow during that floods. Um, the area I was in that I bought in right here, it, it, the house did not flood. Thank God. Um, but something to be aware of, like be aware that there is flooding. There is fires and flight staff. These are real things. It's not meant to scare you. Just be informed about it. So before we hop on over kind of the downtown and the other area, let's, let's scroll back out here. So we kind of, we came from the Northeast side and kind of, we went and looked at the houses that are in the neighborhoods north of 66. Let's take a walk. Let's just go down country club here. Let's talk about continental and some of the nice subdivisions that are in this area. So this is the East side of town. This is a nice area. A lot of folks like the East side. It's not near campus. It's quieter. It's less crowded. Uh, it's a really nice area. My parents and uh, actually most of my family and my brothers, they all still live over here and they love it. Um, so you can see there's two golf courses in the country club area. There's well over a thousand homes in here. Um, this right here is, there's a pride, there's a public, this Oakmont right here, great uh, neighborhood restaurant. That's also where the Continental Country Club is. So if you were to buy a house in here, you'd have access to, you know, pickleball, uh, tennis, swimming pool. All that stuff's right in there. So this is an HOA, Continental Country Club. It's $1,000 a year. Um, really nice. You can see there's a lot of custom homes. They were built in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, nothing's the same. Nothing's cookie cutter. They're large lots. Most homes, you're going to you're gonna be starting at 750 for almost anything in the Country Club area as of now. But it, it's a great area. A lot of Flagstaff locals live here. Um, and I'm going to kind of scroll over here a little bit. So this is Old Walnut Canyon Road. And this will take you out to Campbell Mesa. This is a great forest service area. This is all shut off. When I was in high school, we used to be able to drive back in here um, and take our trucks and do a lot of off-roading. But everything's shut down now, so it's all trails foot only. So it's a great place to go hit trails and get lost in the forest, that's for sure. And the subdivision that's right off of it, so if we drive down Walnut Canyon, Old Walnut Canyon Road. We've got a couple different ones here. So this bottom part, like where my Walnut Hills Road Drive, if you, everything where my cursor is to the right of that, this is called Walnut Meadows. Uh, great subdivision built in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, it was more of a track style subdivision. Uh, really nice homes anywhere from the smallest being 1,300 all the way up to a few that are 3,000 square feet in there. Uh, home prices in there are going to be anywhere from five hundred to eight hundred thousand. Really nice area. You've got these two lakes that are right here by it. You've got the trails right out your back door. There is a little park that's located. I don't know if it'll show up here. There is a little community park that's located right here. It's not on the map. So if I go up here on Avenue Canyon in this area, this is called Walnut Ridge. Uh, they're almost the same subdivision. One's just on the ridge. One's just down a little bit lower. But uh, when I when, as we're going into this area, these homes are a little bit nicer, a little bit bigger uh, square footage wise. You're going to see most of them are going to be 2,000 to 3,000 square foot. Some even a little bit bigger, especially when you get in some of these cul de sacs. And you'll find some houses that would be a million, million plus in that area. Another nice little subdivision. And then if you scroll over here to the country club, we get into. Uh, you get into the Bear Paw, there's another uh, community center here for members, 
for Continental. There's a pool. There's lots of great kid activities and stuff to do there in the summertime. So it's great for a lot of people for a second home. They can utilize this with their kids, take them down there in the kiddie pool, the mini golf, and the little clubhouse they have there. But the Wyndham has a lot of stuff in here too that are that they rent out. But there's also private. Uh, there's also a lot of condos and townhomes that you'll see throughout all of this area. There's a lot of little pockets. I'm, I can't really name all of them off the top of my head. But if you're looking for an area, maybe you're just looking for a little lock and leave one, two bedroom place. There's definitely little condos and subdivisions all throughout this, this area right here. Mountain Oaks, there's a whole, these are a bunch of townhomes in here. Every street's a, basically a different townhome or a condo uh, subdivision. So little area to check out if you're looking for lock and leave or if that's the style of home you might be looking for. It's like I said, there's a lot of, it's a lot of mixed when you're, when you're in flight stuff, there's just little micro mock markets and pockets of everything within it. Uh, so as we go through, we're getting out of country club here. We'll go I'll give you a brief tour or kind of, kind of scroll down a little bit. Um, kind of the edge of town, edge of Butler. This is a main road in town. You get to the edge here. This is Amberwood. Uh, really nice high-end subdivision. Most homes, uh, 2,500 and up, uh, all the way up, you know, 4,000, 5,000 square feet. Homes in there are going to start at 750 and go up towards up 2 million. But it's really nice. You've got green belts all the way around it. Uh, extremely large lots, half acre to an acre plus. Uh, very highly sought out community uh, in Flagstaff. And one that not a lot of people know about. Then you've got the Mount Pleasant area right here. This is, a, I'd say, a, uh, definitely like a luxury part of town. Very quiet. One acre plus lots. Homes, three, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand. There's even some that I've worked on that are uh, eight, nine thousand square feet. So there's some great homes in here. One thing you want to keep in mind this lake here. Uh, <laughs> Lake Elaine is now going dry there, so there's some there's some holes in the liner. It's actually in, in it's in court now with the Continental Country Club on maintaining the water levels. Uh, it's a it's kind of a mess right now because the the HOA is the owners are paying for the reclaimed water to constantly fill it. It's it's a long drawn out battle. It's it's in courts right now. I'll be making more videos on that. But as of right now, it's drained. So some of these folks on this lake are really upset because they paid top dollar to be on the lake. Um, uh, and there's no lake view. Most of these homes are going to be a million. Uh, they start at a million, probably you're going to end up three, four million, uh, on the high end. So if that's a good area you're looking for, not looking for a gated community, this would definitely, these areas, Amberwood, Mount Pleasant, Lakeside Acres, top areas to be considering. So we scroll down, we're still on the east side here. We'll kind of talk about Fox Glen here. So let's kind of scroll down, Fox Glen Park. Here's a main, this is a great park in town. Uh, it's got ball fields, soccer fields. Uh, they've got trails that come off the backside of it. It's a great park uh, for family events and activities. And right across the street is the Fox Glen neighborhood. Uh, this, is, this is a nice neighborhood. It was built in the late 70s, early 80s. A lot of tri-level homes. They're, a lot of them are somewhat similar. There's a few different floor plans in there. Uh, they definitely got some different character of what you don't see most typically in Flagstaff or any other subdivision. It's definitely got a style of its own. Uh, it's a really great family-focused neighborhood. Uh, it's great because you're right next to schools. So you've got Sanawa Middle School right by it. You've got Noah's Elementary School right here. Uh, and you've got the, let's see, you've got, let me see if I can find it here. You should have Northern Arizona Preparatory Academy. That's right by it. The top of four street. There it is. Northland Preparatory Academy. So you've got a lot of schools right here. So this is a charter school. These are both public schools. I actually attended Sanawa when it was a high school and when Knowles Elementary School opened up in 89, that's actually when I went to kindergarten there. So first year it opened. So Fox Glen, definitely a great neighborhood to consider for families. Yeah, home start in there, 450 to 700 right now, which is what we call, what we call our first time home buyer neighborhoods now, uh, as we're making this in 2022. Uh, Forest Springs right here off of 4th Street. This is a new subdivision. Uh, there are townhomes that are in here. These are built. One thing you want to consider is this road noise right here. So some of these folks don't like 
like on this backside, got a lot of road noise from I-40 right here. So newer homes, they're going to be anywhere from 1,800 to 2,500 square foot townhomes that are be in that $600,000 price range. So to scroll down here, and you can't see it on the map, but there's going to be, there's a new subdivision being built in here called Canyon Del Rio. So this is where Flagstaff's going to be growing. Is going to be in this area. Um, the master plan, it's the only area left, but the master plan is really going to be great the next 10 years. You can anticipate a lot of different new construction that's going to be happening in here. Uh, I'm super excited for it. But that's all, this is kind of the only area we have left where there's a developable area that's the city's going to allow us to build on, but that's not back in the Forest Service. So let's see. Now we're getting to the center of town. So let's pick back up. So we've kind of come across Butler. We've got a lot of shops and retail in these areas and apartments, things like that. Let's kind of get, this is the downtown area. You know, you've got the South side right here. You've got all of old town that's in here and Cherry Hill. This is another great little neighborhood right here. Um, a lot of these homes are older, obviously old downtown. You're going to find most of the homes that were built, I mean, from the 1900s and all the way through the 40s. I mean, most of real estate, everyone just showed up today. That's, I mean, it's 1.1 million. So you're going to pay, you're going to pay premium to be in the downtown area. Same with this area up on Cherry Hills, Schweitzer Canyon. You're going to be paying top dollar uh, in those areas as well. These homes were built in the 70s and 80s. So not a, it's a really nice area to consider because you're so close to walking downtown. Lots of ponderosa pine trees, uh, subdivision. The lots are, you know, custom built. Pretty big lots, sizes, but not quite a half acre. You're going to be more in that quarter acre, third of an acre, but still a great area. You're going to be probably paying close to, close to a million dollars in anywhere in there, maybe seven fifty to a million. Let's get up north to 180 here. Talk about a couple other subdivisions that were. This is a very popular area. So this is our hospital right here. Uh, we call this area NoHo or north of the hospital, but you'll hear it commonly called NoHo. Uh, very popular place for people because it, it's really close to Buffalo Park. You can walk to downtown. We have a lot of folks. The Flagstaff Medical Center employs a lot of people. They can walk to work. A uh, whole variety of different houses in here. Uh, anywhere from built in the 50s all the way to the 2000s. Different styles, everything. No HOA. Most homes anywhere are gonna, are in there are going to be anywhere from 500 to a million. One of the most popular areas we come across here is this is Coconino Estates. One of the oldest original uh, subdivisions of Flagstaff. Super popular. Actually has a pool in there. Large lots. Most of the houses built in the 50s, 60s. They range in size anywhere from 1,400. There's been so many different additions. You'll find houses that are two, 3,000 square feet. Um, and people love it and why it's so sought after is because your proximity to downtown. You're so close to downtown. 